How's it going guys, my name's Josh, and in this video, we're going to be taking the character art that we created in the last episode, and importing it into Unreal Engine, so that we can start creating our character blueprint. If you haven't seen the previous episode, you can find that here, or in the description. I'd recommend that you check that out first, so that you can have all of the content to follow along with this video. Alternatively, you can support me on Patreon, and gain access to all of the files for all of my tutorials, so that you can skip the parts that you don't want to do. You could even modify the files, or use them as reference. Or if you don't fancy doing either of those, you can just download a free sprite sheet off the internet. Alright, before we get started, just tidy up the files from last episode a bit, and then create a new folder for the project. Then you can launch the engine and create a new project. You want to select a blank blueprint project, with no starter content, and the quality set to scalable 2D or 3D. Then set the project directory to be the folder that we just created, and give the project a name. The first thing we're going to do once that's opened up, is import our content. You can do this by dragging and dropping your textures folder into the content browser. Then click the icon in the top left corner of the content browser to show the sources panel. Head back to the top directory, and create a new folder for our player. Then move the textures folder into that, since all of the textures that we have so far are for our player animation. Now create two new folders, one for sprites, and one for flipbooks. Then go and find one of your textures, right click it, and under sprite actions, select apply paper 2D texture settings. However, you don't want to be doing this for each texture individually. So instead, head back to the textures folder, and then under filters, you want to select texture. Then select your first, shift click, and select the last texture. Right click, and apply paper 2D texture settings. Right click the textures again, and this time under sprite actions, you want to select create sprite. Then move all of the sprites into our sprites folder, and organize them. Once you've done that, you want to find your small idle sprite, right click it, and select Create Flipbook. Give it a name, and then move it into the Flipbooks folder. Repeat this process for every animation that you'll need. Now open up the run animation, and move the first frame to the end, by simply clicking and dragging. This is so that the first frame of this Flipbook animation, will be set to a forward stride, rather than an idle position. This will prevent any delay from occurring, when transitioning from idle to run. If you feel like doing so, you can go and change the color of the folders in your content browser, to make it easier to find specific content. To do so, right click on a folder, and select set color. Then use the eyedropper, or the color picker tool, to set which color you'd like it to be. Next, you want to right click in the content browser, and select Create Blueprint Class. Then expand the All Classes drop down, and search for Paper Character. Make sure it's highlighted, and then click Select. Give it a name, and then open it up. Over in the Components panel, select the component named Sprite. And then in the Details panel, you want to set the Source Flipbook to our idle animation. You'll see in the viewport, around the sprite, is a capsule shape. This is the player's collision component. You want to resize this to fit your player, by changing the capsule half height and radius settings. You can use the options in the top left corner of the viewport, to change the viewport perspective, and display mode. The dimensions of the texture being used in this animation is 32 by 32 pixels. So I'll want to set the radius and half height to be 16, so that it will fit nicely. Now go to File, New Level, and select Empty Level. Once that loads up, save it and give it a name. Next, you can add your player blueprint to the level, and zero out its location in the Details panel. You can click the icon in the top right corner of the viewport, 
to display the front, right and top orthographic views. We want the base of our character to be perfectly flush with the X origin in our scene. However, the grid snapping isn't currently set up to make this easy for us with the sizes that we're working with. To fix this, go to Edit, Editor Preferences, and search for Grid. Scroll down until you find Level Editor Viewports, and then go ahead and enable Use Power of 2 Snap Size. One more thing you can do is enable 2D Layer Snapping. Now when you go back to your scene, you'll see a tab that says Foreground. If you click this and select Edit Layers, you can click this Snap Layers drop down to change the name and view depth of your 2D layers. Next, you want to search for Camera in the Modes panel, and then drag and drop a camera into your scene. Zero out the camera's location, rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z axis to face the player, and then move it back along the Y axis. Then in the search bar, type Auto, and set Auto Active for Player to Player 0. That will make this the active camera in the scene. Now select your player, and search for Auto Possess, and set Auto Possess Player to Player 0. This will make it so that we control this character by default when we press play. When you hit play, the character will instantly drop out of view. This is because the paper character class already has gravity implemented in its base code. If you go to the basic tab in the modes panel, you can grab a cube to put underneath our player to stop this from happening. Now when you press play, the character will no longer fall, but you won't be able to see the cube. This is because the cube uses a lit material and we don't have any lights in our scene. You don't need to worry about this, because anything that we include in our levels will use an unlit material. Next, you want to select your camera and set the projection mode to orthographic. This means that everything facing the camera will be rendered flat along the x-axis. You'll now notice that changing the distance between the camera and the subject will no longer affect the rendered view. This is because depth in orthographic mode is controlled by the author width value in the details panel. This effectively works as a zoom, where lower author width values will appear more zoomed in than the higher ones. To recap what we've done, we've imported our character art and created assets for animation, we've created a player blueprint, modified the engine grid to work with more appropriate sizes, and implemented a basic camera. Now we have a basic framework in place so that in the next episode we can begin scripting the player's movement. Alright that about does it for this one guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did then leave a like and consider subscribing for more game design related content available each week. If you've got any questions then leave a comment and I'll see if I can help. Or if you feel like sharing your work then tag me at one of the links below. Check out the Patreon if you like what I'm doing and you want to get more involved. Other than that. Have a good day and God bless.